So I worked at this dealership for eight years. I was the face of the dealership. We were killing it. And I mean killing it, right? To where everyone in the industry is like, that's impossible, they're a liar, they're cheating, like all the things. Killing it. And for the first time in eight years, I took 10 days off, 10 days in a row. And the reason being is we had an event called Hustle and Grind Con. Anybody here go to Hustle and Grind Con? We had an event called Hustle and Grind Con on one weekend, and then there was a men's Christian leadership event the following weekend, and I wanted to do both. And so I took the whole time off, and I sandwiched three or four days to spend with my wife and my kids, because I'd been working my tail off. So weekend one, I'm standing on stage with Eric Thomas. Anybody know Eric Thomas? Right? right? When you want to succeed, as bad as you want to be, that's when you'll be successful. I'm like, dang, bro. Golly. Right? I can. I will. I must. I can. I will. I must. I'm like, I can. I will. I must. Right? He's so good at that. So it's Eric's fault. It's part Eric's fault. <laughs> then I went home and spent three or four days with my, with my wife and my kids. And ate breakfast with them and ate dinner with them, things I hadn't done in like eight years. And then from there, I went to a men's Christian leadership conference. And at the men's Christian leadership conference, there's a guy um, named Scott Nickel. Um, anybody here from Lexington? You guys know Scott Nickel, Southland Christian Church? So Scott Nickel comes up and he says, now most of you probably know flannel graph Jesus. I'm like, flannel graph, what is that? He's like, flannel graph Jesus is the little Jesus, is the little Jesus that's walking around like holding a sheep. And they used to teach it in kids' school, like in kids, what do they call that? Sunday school. They used to teach it in Sunday school and they show you Jesus carrying around a sheep and all that. He's like, most of you know flannel graph Jesus. He said, so let me teach you warrior Jesus. And he went through and he broke down how Jesus himself fought tooth and nail every single day for what he believed in. How he fought tooth and nail every single day to offer hope to people. And he called us as men to go out and fight, right? To fight for, for our children, for our wives, for humanity. So Eric Thomas, then Tom with family, then this guy's like calling out the Jesus, right? Flannel graph Jesus and the warrior Jesus. So then I went to work, fired up, Scott. Like ready to rock and roll, bro. Had my, had my Saturday morning or my Monday morning sales meeting, which is always fire, by the way. I give the best meetings on the planet. We had a fire meeting. And then right after the meeting, one of the owners of the dealerships pulled me into his office. And he pulled me in the office and he said the first few words out of his mouth I instantly went, like as soon as he said these words, I instantly in my head went, you gotta make a decision right now, Glenn. You can stay here and do this and have a great life. You'll have the white picket fence, the dog, the kids. You'll have all of that. You can stay here and do that. You can be very comfortable right here, totally okay. Or, Follow me and see where I'll take you. And so I just decided it wasn't courage. It was a calling. And after, after the, 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 the setup was in place, and so I looked at this man who was talking to me about, you know, things that didn't make me feel the way that these other things made me feel. It was an, uh, 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 an exact opposite feeling. And so as he looked at me with that, I just thought, this season is over. And I think that for a lot of people, we reach those points in our life where we know the season's over. We know we're called for more. But we think about it. And when we think about it, we convince ourselves to stay where we are, that we're not good enough that we're not capable, that how am I gonna do it? What's the plan? What, like Scott said, what the hell are you doing? What's the plan? 
And so it wasn't courage, it was a calling. And I just responded to the calling. And fast forward, I got home, and my wife was nine and a half months pregnant with Oakland. My wife was nine and a half months pregnant with Oakland, right? She was ready to pop any second. And here she is, she, she was in the garage and she looked at me and she said, what are you doing here? 9.30 on a Monday morning. She said, what are you doing here? I said, honey, I quit my job. Now imagine being pregnant with your seventh child. Sole provider is this dude right here. And he tells you he just quit his job. So I told my wife I quit my job and she looked at me, Scott, she smiled. The biggest smile I've ever seen on her. I hadn't realized how much pressure I'd been putting on my wife, chasing what I thought was the, the, the big dream, right? And I had to put in the work, I had to put in the grind. But as soon as I saw her smile, then I knew that this was 100% the right decision for me. Wow, 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 wow. Did y'all get that? Mm. Amazing, amazing. So Dora, Get somebody in your corner who will support you. I'm just telling you right now, if you, if you ain't got people that could be nine months pregnant and you quit your job and them smile at you, right? Like, please, get your, no, like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't got people in your life that will support you and that believe in you, then you need to change that. And that can start today because there's people in this room, I believe in every single one of you and everyone else in this room does too. So get around the right people.